Russian middleman Simeon Mogilevich emerged at the center of an alleged money laundering scheme that now threatens a major U.S. bank. Victims don't mean anything to him, and what makes him so dangerous is that he operates without borders. Here's a guy who managed to defraud investors out of $150 million in Philadelphia without ever stepping foot in the area. This is what the FBI wrote about Semyon Moglovich, sometimes called the Brainy Don. Semyon made the FBI's most wanted list the same year as Osama bin Laden and is considered the leader of the Red Mafia or the boss of all bosses in the Russian Mafia. Described as the most ruthless and powerful crime boss of the Russian Mafia, his control extended to alleged links to Donald Trump and ties to Vladimir Putin. Despite his FBI wanted status, however, he lives freely in Russia to this day. The question remains, why? But before we dive into the story, subscribe to the channel and never miss our upcoming video. Let's take a trip to Kiev, Ukraine, 1946. Simeon Moglovich was born. Simeon was born into a Jewish family. The criminal mastermind graduated in economics from the University of Lviv, but in the 1980s, the ambitious young criminal began his career by scamming fellow Soviet Jews eager to immigrate to Israel or America. Simeon promised Jewish families that he would buy their assets, legally sell them for a fair market value, and then graciously returned the proceeds. But he simply pocketed the money. He served two terms in prison, of three and four years, for this stunt. Meanwhile, many of the Soviet Jews he defrauded settled in New York and established their own mob. Donald Trump would become involved with these characters, as they bailed him out of a series of bankruptcies. After the fall of the Soviet Union in the early 1990s, Russian veterans of the Afghan war returned home, intolerant of traditional lifestyles. The hardened soldiers decided to start their own illegal businesses, which led to the exponential rise of organized crime. This is when Simeon quickly established himself as a major player in the post-Soviet criminal world. He is said to have employed and trained Afghanistan war veterans as his enforcers, and they mutilated enemies and associates so severely that other Russian crime groups quietly disappeared. He founded the criminal organization known as the Brothers Circle, also known as the Bratva Brotherhood or the Red Mafia. The term Red Mafia refers to a loose association of organized crime groups that emerged in the former Soviet Union and other countries with strong ties to Russia. These groups are often called Red because of their links to communism and the former Soviet government. The Bratva quickly became a notorious Russian mob family, infamous for its brutality, and began expanding his criminal enterprises into the West. Among his associates was Vyacheslav Ivankov, who became the godfather of the Russian mob in America, with connections to criminal organizations across Europe, Asia, and North America. The fortune Simeon built by scamming the Jews gave him a substantial advantage over more petty thugs. And to take it a step further, he took to money laundering for the Sontsevskaya Bratva, a well-organized Russian crime syndicate based in Moscow. He became the key money laundering contact for the Soltsevskaya Bratva and has since held over 100 front companies and bank accounts in 27 different countries, all to keep the cash flowing. Simeon has been accused of a wide range of criminal activities, including extortion, racketeering, fraud, and even murder. He has been linked to some of the largest and most sophisticated financial crimes in history, including the looting of Russian public assets after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Where money was to be found, Semyon was there. For example, Semyon purchased a bankrupt airline from a former Central Asian Soviet Republic for millions of dollars in cash to traffic heroin out of the Golden Triangle. He controlled everything that came and went into Moscow's international airport, which Elson called a smuggler's paradise. Later, the Moglovich group obtained control over Income Bank, one of the largest private banks in Russia, in a secret deal with the bank chairman getting direct access to the world's financial system. The bank collapsed in 1998, however, under suspicions of money laundering. Throughout the years, Semyon also started multiple national enterprises. In 1997 and 1998, however, the presence of Semyon and others associated with the Russian Mafia behind a public company trading on the Toronto Stock Exchange, YBM Magnus International Incorporated, 
was exposed by Canadian journalists. The mastermind, with his economics degree and clever lies, forged documents for the Securities and Exchange Commission that raised the company's stock price nearly 2,000%. On May 13, 1998, dozens of agents for the FBI and several other U.S. government agencies raided YBM's headquarters in Newton, Pennsylvania. Shares in the public company, which had been valued at $1 billion on the Toronto Stock Exchange, became worthless overnight. And no, that is not all. In addition to fraud and lucrative trafficking of guns and drugs, Simeon used his resources to enter the energy sector. He bought his way into natural gas pipelines in Russia and Eastern Europe, which was a lucrative move considering the fact that Russia is responsible for supplying around 30% of Europe's gas. Right now, Russia supplies about 30% of Europe's gas. Ironically, the country's largest pipeline to the rest of Europe shares a name with the mob, Bratstvo, and this is where it gets scary. Many refer to it as the energy underworld because the influence of Semyon in Europe's energy sector is concerning. You probably don't know this, but international organized criminals actually control significant positions in the global energy market, including Semyon, who influences large portions of the former Soviet Union's natural gas industry. And because Ukraine transports 80% of Russia's gas to Europe, he basically controls the gas. So, with the rise in energy prices, it can be said that the energy market is a lucrative activity and has provided criminals with many opportunities. Between 1993 and 1998, however, the FBI was stunned by Simeon's economic savviness and caught the FBI's attention. He was then considered to be the most powerful Russian mobster alive, with a $100,000 reward offered by the FBI for information leading to his arrest. On January 24, 2008, Semyon was arrested in Moscow for suspected tax evasion. His bail was placed, and he was released on July 24, 2009. Despite numerous criminal investigations and indictments in the United States and Europe, Simeon has never been convicted of any major crimes. He has managed to evade law enforcement by hiding in Russia and other countries that do not have extradition treaties with the United States or Europe. Simeon's criminal empire is said to be worth billions of dollars, and he is still believed to be involved in organized crime activities to this day. He is still considered to be one of the most wanted men in the world even though the Bureau removed him from the list in December 2015, indicating that he no longer met list criteria because there is no extradition treaty between Russia and the US. Allegedly, the boss of bosses has a good relationship with Putin, and it appears Simeon lives and operates freely under Vladimir Putin's protection to this day. Considering the US doesn't have an extradition treaty with Russia, as long as Simeon stays within Putin's borders, the boss of bosses will likely remain a free man. That was all for this video. Subscribe if you want to see more of these videos, and let us know in the comments what you want to see next. Until then, see ya!